it's both peaceful and beautiful. Me and my lab members in the still of the night watching this just spectacular display of, of communication of fireflies. The goal of the project was to go out to the field uh, where uh, we can find swarms of synchronous fireflies and capture their flash patterns, uh, both spatially and temporally, um, in their natural habitat. You know, fireflies synchronize their flashes, and there's a huge variety of mathematical models that use that as an inspiration to explain how a large system of individuals can interact with each other kind of locally uh, in order to create an emergent global behavior, which can be synchronization. Sometimes, not always, uh, nature and our technological needs verge on, on, you know, they need to solve similar problems. Fireflies uh, offer kind of a rare opportunity to work with a simpler communication signal. So their uh, communication signal is purely visual, uh, light on or light off, you know, to a first approximation. It's a little bit like Morse code. So it's a simple communication signal. It's traceable, as we showed, even in really, really large congested groups of individuals. It offers an opportunity to ask deep questions about animal communication, for example, how they handle signal to noise. The swarms are ginormous. There are you know, tens of thousands of individuals, at, especially that site that we were at, at the Smoky Mountains, we actually never really saw the, the end of the swarm. <laughs> so, you know, we walked for several miles and it was still like a one coherent group. So um, it's, it's reasonable to assume that Firefly at one edge of the swarm cannot directly communicate with a, or see, you know, in that case, a Firefly the completely other side of the swarm. So the communication and synchronization has to occur somewhat based on local information. It feels like it's a constant race against time when we are out there and trying to, to record them. We have to get all of our equipment. We have to, in this, you know, this case, drive there um, and uh, set everything up. And then um, not only that it's uh, restricted to two weeks, uh, there's also a very particular window throughout the day in which they communicate and produce those flashes. So there are a few hours in the night. The advantage of uh, 360 cameras is that we can place them inside the swarm and capture the visual field uh, as if it would be from the perspective of a female firefly. There's more uh, applications that I can imagine where this would be useful to synchronize a swarm of robots without any global supervision, right? That's the... Uh, the whole idea in swarm robotics that you have this autonomous uh, distributed decision making. Uh, so if you can get the robots to have some kind of internal clock that it's synchronized with everybody else, just based on local interactions, you can do things like uh, for moving large objects or moving a swarm as itself. This will eventually just take over my lab because it's so interesting. Um, there's just a lot of questions, interesting questions that we want to still answer and, and uh, get more data potentially with other firefly species and so on.